denying or taking anything from this book. Professing and standing against the wages of death, which is sin. Don't be deceived, folks. God will not be mocked. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You must repent and turn to the one true living God or you will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Do not be deceived. These are spots and blemishes that feast with you in Jude writes. Don't be deceived. They disguise themselves, but inwardly they're wolves. They're workers of Satan and iniquity. Trying to get you to continue in your sin. God forbid those things happen. Repent and turn to the one true living God and he will write his laws on your heart. You will be a new creature created in the image of Christ Jesus. That's the gospel. Not you're going to bring some of your sins into this new image. Uh -uh. It's not going to happen. I can assure you of that. God's word says it won't and it will not. I don't care if you've cleaned up eight things. You better get rid of the other two. It doesn't matter. You must crucify it all. You must give it all to God. You must be a doer of it. If you can't do that, then you cannot be his. Do you not know that your service to whom you obey? If you obey a doctrine like that, then you, you're a servant of the devil. If you obey this doctrine and this word and crucify the flesh with all of its passions, all of its desires, walk in the spirit, have the mind of the spirit, mortifying the deeds of the flesh, you will live. Do not be deceived. Anybody that adds or takes to this book, plagues will be added to them or their name will be blotted out of the Lamb's book of life. And what do we read in first, or Second Thessalonians chapter 1? That vengeance and wrath is coming on the sons of disobedience. All those people that believe a lie he was deceived. She believed that she would not die and death came upon all because she, she was deceived. If God said you'll die if you eat of that tree, you'll die. And I can assure you if you sin and God said if you sin you will die, you will die because God said that, not Chris. God works through me. Christ lives in me and I can only speak what he said is true with the armor of God on. Hallelujah. He which testified these things, say, surely I come quickly. Amen, even so come, Lord Jesus. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 5. We're going to look at verse 4. And then I'm going to finish, guys. We're running a race. Endurance, guys. Endurance is the key. You need the armor. You're going to go through affliction, distress, trial, tribulation. But let these words edify you. These things are happening for a reason. My health has just took a haywire here lately. It's all for a reason. God does all things for the good. All things. Verse 4. What are we doing? We're running a race. When you run a race, you're going to receive a crown if you finish the race. Trophy. Let these words edify you. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, this is verse 4, chapter 5, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It will never fade. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud, giveth grace to the humble. Can you humble yourself and submit that God's ways are true and that your old ways are not? Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober. You know, if you're a drunkard, you're not sober. If you're putting toxins into your body or if you're gambling or if, or if you're pleasing your flesh, you're not sober. That's not spiritual. Sober means to be spiritual. It doesn't mean just... That means to completely be spiritual. Take that old mind out and crucify that old mind. 
and the heart and everything of that old man killing. And let spiritually be born again into the new man created in Christ. Be sober. That's what that means. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He wants your soul. He's going to tell you a lie. He's going to deceive you into believing that you can still, nobody's perfect. What this guy said, nobody's perfect. Paul's not perfect. He's still a sinner. Writing this, you've got to be kidding me. Why would Paul tell people to, to repent, quit sinning, depart from sin? Why would Paul preach with unction and authority everywhere he went on missionary trips? Why would Paul say that if you live in the flesh, you will die? And that this author, this whoever's writing these footnotes, says that Paul's a sinner. You talk about hypocrisy. That's what Satan does. That's what he's still doing today. And that's what he's always going to do until God destroys him in the lake of fire that burneth forever. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Christ has already destroyed him. We're waiting to see the day of the Lord, the great and dreadful day of the Lord. As a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. We're afflicted, we're sawn asunder, persecuted, stoned, all of those things, folks. Persecution every day. But not moved. But the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After, this is the, after that ye have suffered. A while. Why are you going through the suffering? Make you perfect. Zacharias was perfect, he said. Job was perfect. Noah was perfect. Man of God, you are perfect. What this man say? He's trying to come at Paul, not Saul. Paul was perfect. Why? You went through the sufferings, preaching the truth of the gospel. These men don't preach the truth. They twist the scripture up and say that they're preaching the truth. And they measure themselves by themselves and say they're, they're being persecuted for his name's sake. No, you're not. No, you're not. You've anointed yourself. You're, you've made yourself a minister of Christ. As, as Satan also transforms himself into an angel of light, the Bible says. You're actually his minister when you twist his words. When you add or take the, from, from this book, you're taking away from Christ. That little child that wants to be delivered from their from death, from sin. And you're telling them a lie. Oh, it'd be better that a millstone were cast around your neck. Woe unto those individuals that do those things. I can't imagine standing before a holy God and saying that it was okay to sin. Are you kidding me? You think a holy and righteous God that, that ordered John the Baptist to say, repent, is going to sit there and listen to that? Or do you think he's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, sin? I never knew you. Oh, but I cast out demons in your name and I spoke your name and I did all these things in your name. I never knew you. You took away from my book. You added, you added words to my book. You remember my child that came in and they wanted to be delivered and you prevented them? You told them lies and doctrines of devils? Do you remember that? Let me, let me replay it for you. Where the worm will never die. You know that worm's gonna be like a replay button for all those false prophets and teachers that continue to speak lies with false signs and wonders and divinations Remember the books. When they're opened, your lies will be exposed. Nothing is hidden unto the Lord. All things are naked unto God. All of your lies and every wonder, 
will be revealed because the light will reveal it. I can assure you that the light is not mixing with sin. You can't have Christ and you can't have Belial. Choose Christ today. Be set free. He said, come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her plagues. What do we just read about in Revelation 22? Anybody that adds words to this book, the plagues will be added to them. This mother of harlots, what does she do? She's drunk. She's drunk on this wine, this harlotry of fornication. What is she doing? She's committing harlotry against Christ, cheating on Christ, taking his grace and casting it to the ground and committing their own sin, filling their own bellies, pleasuring their own self with the gospel. Can you imagine? Vengeance is the Lord's, he says, I will repay. I want to read verse 10. We're running a race, guys. Blameless, holy unto the Lord. Crucifying the flesh. Walking with Christ. Verse 10, but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you have suffered a while, make you perfect. Establish, strengthen, settle you. Don't curse God because you're going through a suffering. Rejoice. God is doing a work in you. You don't know it yet. But I can tell you it's going to strengthen, settle you, and it's going to make you perfect. To Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. When you finish that race, you're going to receive a crown that fades not away forever and ever and ever. There's not going to be any rust or moth that corrupts that crown. There's not going to be any enemies of the cross of Christ to take away your crown. Nothing, Paul says in Romans chapter 8, nothing will separate me from the love of Christ. Nothing. The suffering is only going to strengthen you. It's only going to make you stronger. It's going to settle you. And it's going to get you to run this race with patience, with fear, and with trembling. Serving the one true living God all the days of your life. Not being a proclaimer of the word, but a doer of the word. living holy unto God in his statues and in his covenant. I know these are strong words, guys, but we're to run this race with patience and faith. Bible in Judy says, save some with compassion, save some with fear. However you took this word, it's God's word. His word doesn't go out vain. Let it go forth through the sound waves. It's what God wanted me to say. And I'm just doing what my duty is to do. A servant to the Lord. I'm running a race. I'm striving for that prize in Christ Jesus. That incorruptible crown. And I can assure you. Nothing will separate me from the love of Christ. I will not be persuaded by false doctrine, by false teachers and preachers. I will crucify the flesh and I will follow Jesus Christ. I will do his will and drink the cup that he's given me to drink and be baptized with the baptism that he was baptized with. That's my duty to do. That's what I've been called to do. We all have a calling. And as you go through the sufferings of Christ, 
that calling will be revealed to you more and more. Let it strengthen you and let it settle you as we read in 1 Peter. Let it make you perfect. God wants to have you so humble, submitted wholeheartedly to him as he's jealous over you with godly jealousy. He wants you all to himself. You're his child and he loves you. He's establishing, he's putting roots in you, he's settling you. He's doing the work in you that only the power of God through the Holy Spirit can do. So that's all we have for today, guys. I thank you all for tuning in. I hope this message edifies and exhorts and strengthens you guys. As we just read, let it strengthen you. Don't let the persecution hinder you, but let it do something deep within you, strengthening you. All, all that name his name that live for Christ will be afflicted, will be persecuted. Your token of manifestation is to stay strong. Don't be hindered. Don't envy what the world has. Don't envy what the false doctrine has or the false teachers and preachers. Who cares? Who cares if they have big churches or, or their churches of their own? Who doesn't matter? All that matters is doing the will of the Father. I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word that you've given. I pray, Father, that it continues to work through me, strengthening me, settling me, as well as the people that are listening to it. Let hearts be open to what you have to say. Let me always do your will, Lord Jesus. Submitting my whole life to you daily, never forgetting about you or your word. Always, always maintaining that special relationship in the closet. I pray that they have a special relationship with you, that they seek you, that they draw nigh to you as you will draw nigh to them. Strengthen your body, Lord. Settle your body, establish your body. Perfect your body as a chaste virgin. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Be strong, body of Christ, in the power of the Lord. Quench every fiery dart of the devil through your word, through the armor of God. Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Awake to righteousness and depart from iniquity. Be strong and a good soldier in the Lord Jesus Christ. A good soldier is not entangled with the affairs of this life. He's an overcomer and he separates himself so that he's not a partaker of the plagues. Lord, I thank you and I praise you so much for your word. May it edify your body, strengthen your body. May people, may your true body come into this body. May anybody that is thinking you're coming in, may they just come in. Be a doer of the word. Stop being a trier and be a doer. Let them hold nigh to the head. Grab hold of the head and never let go. I pray for them that their hearts are open. That you come in and magnify yourself. Give the increase, Father, like only you can. I love you, Jesus, with all of my heart and soul. And I give you praise because you're worthy. You're more than worthy. And we are conquerors through you who loved us. I love you, Jesus. And I thank you with all of my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless each and every one of you. Continue to tune in. In Jesus' name, guys, amen.